Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the uh, September 11, 2018 meeting of the Carver Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, this is uh, this is an important date in this country's history, so I'm going to ask everybody to uh, take a moment uh, to consider what happened on this date a few years ago. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. Okay, the first uh, item of the evening that I would like to address are the members of this board. I observe that we do not, again, have our nameplates in front of us. So for everyone here tonight, and we have uh, a number of people, and for everyone who is watching on TV, in this meeting, I should observe, is being filmed by our friends at Area 58. We welcome them as always, and we're glad that they are here. Uh, to my far left is Fran Mello, who has uh, years of experience in business administration. We're happy to have her. To my immediate left is Eric Mueller, who uh, for years has been involved in the septic business and uh, has very important insights that are helpful to this board on cases involving septic issues. To my far right is James Nowen, who uh, has uh, tons of experience in the conservation field. He's our green guy. And to our immediate, or my immediate right, is um, Sharon Clark, who is the vice chair of this board and the most senior member of this board as well. Uh, yours truly, I'm Stephen Gray. I have a law practice here in town. So we have uh, a wide variety of experiences and uh, depth of experience that I think is unique uh, for this particular board, the Zoning Board of Appeals. I think, uh, you know, I am personally very proud of everybody up here who's been serving uh, on the board for a number of years now and uh, as I said, brings to this board a wealth of experience uh, and insight. Having made those introductions, the first matter that I would like to address tonight is the meeting minutes for July 31, 2018, which was our last meeting. Uh, Ms. Clark uh, prepared those meeting minutes for everyone, and I would like to ask if all the members have had an opportunity to review those meeting minutes at this time. Yeah. I have also. James, are I you? Have, yes. Okay. Does anybody have anything that they would like to add or subtract or amend or modify with regard to these <clears throat> meeting minutes? Uh, I see one typo, which is the fourth paragraph from the bottom on page one where the word read is repeated twice. My computer did that. Okay. So uh, if that could be deleted so that we've got a nice uh, grammatical flow to that sentence. Uh, does anyone have anything that they want to add besides that one little change that I just mentioned? Do I hear a motion? I move we approve the minutes as amended. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it unanimously. So the meeting minutes from our last meeting, July 31, 2018, are now approved and part of the official record. Tonight we have one public hearing that we will open. That is public hearing on case number 34-1. The petitioner is Davenport Building Company. Who's here from Davenport? and they are of 20 North Main Street, South Yarmouth. The petitioner is requesting a variance from side setbacks pursuant to 2320 of the uh, Carver Zoning Bylaw for property located at 14 Andrews Point Road in Carver, which is assessor's map one lot eight. 
uh, with the intention to demolish and then reconstruct a new home on a pre-existing non-conforming lot in a residential agricultural district. So that's the case that brings us all together here tonight. And it appears from the application that the side setback relief uh, needed is at least 15 feet on the sides and the rear yard setback relief uh, 35 feet on the back. Is that correct? What is your name? Michael Williams. Michael Williams from Davenport Building Company. Will you be presenting tonight on behalf of the petitioner? The floor is yours. <coughs> whatever you're comfortable with. If you'd like to stand over there by the easel, that would be fine. Is yeah. the owner of the property here? Yes. Jeff Merritt. Okay, thank you. Working in the front row with Joe, Joe Bass, buddy. Okay, thank you. And the two of you are joint owners of the property? Right. Is that correct? All right. So the floor again is yours. We are, we're here uh, seeking... Uh, lawful pre-existing non-conforming residential home and we are working to make this house less non-conforming than existing homes to change the setbacks so based on section 22254 of the zoning bylaws chapter 40a section 6 we're seeking a special permit as the proposed modifications will not be substantially more detrimental to the existing non-conforming structure of the neighborhood in addition to increasing setbacks, we are also discontinuing the existing cesspools and installing a new Title V system entirely outside of the buffer zone. We do have letters from the Conservation Commission, the Building Department, and the Board of Health to support everything that we've done. Can I uh, stop you there just for a second? Can I see the letter from the Conservation Commission for a moment? All right, James Nowen. Mm -hmm. It says here in this letter dated August 28, 2018, that Brooke Monroe, the local conservation agent, says that she's writing on behalf of the Conservation Commission, of which you are a member, mm -hmm. in support of the proposed demolition of the existing a structure and construction of a new single-family dwelling at 14 Andrews Point Road, which is the subject of this petition, which is in front of us now. Mm -hmm. Did you vote on this? Yes. It may be a good idea to recuse yourself on this one. I have no financial interest in it. Why would I need to recuse myself? No, no, we're not talking about financial interest, but you have already indicated by way of a previous vote on a different commission what your partiality is. I agreed on the position of the Conservation Commission, and that's all there is. Now, this is a, a different position, different set of, I don't think I need to recuse myself. All right. What is the feeling of the rest of the members of the board on this? I would like him to recuse himself. I also sit on competing boards at times, and I think if I've taken a, a vote on a project no matter what my position is, but if I've taken a vote on one project and that project comes before me in another matter, I, I don't feel that my, I feel that my partiality could be questioned. And, um, and while I understand that you might feel, or that you do feel, that you can make an impartial judgment, I think on something that deals with wetlands and a rebuild on a pond in wetlands on something that you've already approved through the Conservation Commission, which is just one step to getting it there, mm -hmm. I, I, I would feel more comfortable if you recused yourself. Ms. Anybody Mello else? and Mr. Mueller. Anybody else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Presented it well. Yes. Do you have an opinion one way or the other, Ms. Mello? I actually feel with Jim that 
It was presented the, to the conservation in one aspect of the board, probably having to do with the wetlands and whatever. And there'll be other things coming to our board beyond what the conservation talked about in regards to this. And he, I don't have a problem with him sitting on it. Okay. Insofar, Jim, as what Ms. Clark had to say, um, and I deal with this every day in my profession, there are two kinds of um, bias. There's actual bias, as you point out, maybe you have a financial interest in something, which we know you don't in this particular case, but there's also the appearance of bias, the appearance. Um, something that just doesn't look good or smell good because maybe you've already been involved in a decision-making way on the same project. So I'm inclined to agree with Ms. Clark and Mr. Mueller on this and would again respectfully ask that you consider recusing yourself, not because you feel as if you have an actual conflict of interest, but because there's an appearance, perhaps, at least there might be in the minds and thoughts of some people that there would be an appearance of a conflict. I will recuse myself uh, under protest. I think that the uh, arguments stated are perhaps a little ridiculous. However, I will accept them. Okay. So this puts us in a situation um, where we have now four voting members of the board. And this puts us in a bit of a different situation mm -hmm. now that Mr. Nowen has graciously uh, agreed to step aside on this. What I mean is that with a four-member board, in order to get <coughs> approval for what it is that you want to do, the decision up here has to be unanimous. If we were sitting as a five-member board, four to one would be sufficient to carry the day. So I just want to make sure that you understand that at this juncture with Mr. Nowen uh, agreeing to step aside for this one, that uh, the members up here have to be unanimous in terms of what it is that you want to be doing. Are you prepared to go forward under those conditions? Yes. Yes, for the record? Yes. So for the record, yes, they understand uh, what's required in terms of a vote to carry this petition. Sorry to have interrupted. Here we have a, a view of the site plan. This shows the existing house outlined here, and this is where the proposed new house. Same plan as what you have. The only thing we've changed is we outlined this in red. So it's the same plan that was submitted. And these are the changes that we are proposing. We're changing from existing 5 feet to 15 feet, existing 8 feet to 15, existing 10 to 35. That's our proposal. The 15, 15, 35 is what you need? Yes, sir. Okay, I wasn't quite sure what you meant by existing and proposed. So. That, I, I'm with, I, I agree uh, with you. Does that mean it's currently five feet away and it's going to be 15 feet away? Correct. So now you need a 35 foot variance, uh, no, 15 foot variance from the side lot. Correct. Okay, and 35 and from, the rear, from the rear. It's going to be 15 from the rear, right? It's, it's going to sit 35 feet yes, from the side lot, so feet. it's supposed to be 50, so you need a 50, okay. 50, that is okay, good. you're right, so he needs, he needs 15, 15, and 15. Okay. Any questions? Or? That's it? Well, uh, That's all you got? We have, well, sorry, we have pictures of the house, the existing, the sure. stakes on the lot. Sure. Tomorrow. Well, you know, they say pictures uh, speak a thousand well, words. Well, tell, right? tell us about the house that you're going to raise. Is it uninhabitable? Is it currently being used? Um, I know you have a two-bedroom restriction on. Is that anything you build for, on this, this lot, or is that currently for the house that's sitting there? So it's a, it's a two two bedroom house now, and it is in um, it's in it's in the condition where it needs to be rebuilt. So and that's the whole idea is to do this and to move the septic and get it correct. It's on a cesspool system, so the septic system. Also on the lot is a, an existing garage on the back side of the lot, mm -hmm. and that that's what conditions where the location. 
So you need dimensional variances. You need three dimensional variances. Yes, sir. And you know what that means under Chapter 40A, right? You've got to be able to demonstrate something um, unique about the soil or the elevation or the um, shape of the lot, it seems to me, to justify um, the variances that you're requesting. And, and these also become self-imposed hardships, which aren't allowed. Um, you can leave the house where it is and... You can use the same footprint, in other words. Use the same footprint and build from there. But by moving it, you impose these hardships, the need for the variance on yourself, and self-imposed hardships aren't allowed. So keep talking. I'm sorry, under, under a special permit, I believe, as long as we're improving the setbacks in all conditions. Okay. So this is a, a special permit and variances? It no, has to be a special just permit. A, just a special permit. Hmm. Okay. No, this is. Okay, keep talking. That's, and the, these are pictures of the existing house for these are just where the lot line is from. Is that a is that gray house is that the a butter's house next to it? And over here? Yes. yes. So this is the lot line. So is that this house here? Huh. Yes. Okay. How do you access this? So this is the driveway that comes in from here and comes around this way here. Is this Lakeview Street over here? That is uh, Andrews Point Road. Oh, Andrews Point Road, which comes Correct. off Lakeview. Lake. Right. 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 Let me just interject here for a second. It appears as if the application here is for a variance and not for a special permit. Did you file anything with the billing department indicating specifically that you're looking for a special permit as opposed to dimensional variances? Yes, when we, when we did, and you'll see in his letter um, that he submitted. Which letter? This one. I believe it's the top letter. It's like in your copy also. No, the public rooms. Sure, I have one here somewhere. The public notice is only for variance because it's under the dimensional requirements 2320. Yeah. The special permits under what section? We do that all the time. Yeah. Uh, that is under. This becomes a matter of notice a matter of public notice. Um, we know what you want. 5310 for special that, that's permits. That's not sir. what you, the public notice, the notice that went out to the public okay. says. And that could be an issue. It, it might require republic, republication. That's what we're talking about here. Okay? okay? I mean, I know we know what you want to do. Um, but in order to get over the self-imposed hardship hurdle, you need the special permit. That's not what you advertised for. And I apologize. We did what we were expected, but yes. Okay. Right. I, I understand. Because that's also not what your application says. The application talks about setbacks and um, the relief for those. So that should have been picked up by the building inspector. His, his recommendation to you should have been for a special permit that included these. All right, that's what I'm going to say at this point. Let us, let us talk amongst ourselves here. What do you think? Well, before we 
start digesting and chewing over this issue. Is there anything that any other member of the board would like to say about this issue of variance versus special permit that I identified and is apparently also in in the public notice it's an issue as well. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Yeah, what, what I've seen so far it should be a special permit application. Because the special permit we, we get to right. analyze your traffic and I get to ask about your access and where you're putting the house as opposed to the access and is it going to generate any more traffic and there's a whole series of things that we have to check off and that deserves to be the notice to the public. Um, I think once we've opened the hearing, um, I, I think these people can, can say it if they want to interject anything, that would be up to you. Um, well, understand with variances, we're, we're limited by Massachusetts law, Chapter 40A, as you know. Um, and your ability to get this by us favorably is much more limited and problematic. But with special permits, you've got more wiggle room. Again, the problem is that it's not noticed as a special permit. It's noticed as a variance request based on my reading of the papers. So you can continue to pursue this discussion tonight with us. Reading between the lines, I think you know there, there could be some serious questions raised if you continue to go forward on the basis of the variance request as opposed to the special permit. Um, what's your timetable here in terms of construction? Well, we'd like to get through the permitting process and start in this fall. Okay. But I'm not sure without the special permit that we don't swing it all the way back because they're moving it to current zoning. So that's a 60,000 square foot lot and then suddenly they need a, a variance for that. And yeah, lot size too. Lot size, if, we, if, we're, if we're going strictly on that. I mean, even if the public notice had said special permit and then quoted <coughs> the dimensional, um, we probably could have gone with that, but it doesn't. It says um, a variance and it says dimensional. It, it quotes the dimensional table. Um, and by the way, we, none of us up here puts any of this on you folks. If you are no. given some misdirection or incorrect information when you went to apply, then, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's not on you. We're not casting aspersions on anybody here. It's just that there are certain stubborn legal rules and regulations to which we must adhere. And as frustrating as this must be, I'm sure, for you folks, it is equally frustrating for me every day in my job. So I get it. And um, I do want to give the public, though, an opportunity to be heard tonight. There are quite a few people in the room. So if anybody would like to make comment to us, uh, raise your hand and stand and identify yourselves, and we'd be happy to hear from you. Hey, my name is Dan Sullivan. I'm in the bio. I live at 10 years. Hello, Dan. Hi. Um, I like the plan. Uh, I like the idea that they're going to improve the house, improve the neighborhood, uh, increase the tax base, move it back further from the pond, have minor setbacks, um, and more space within the sidewalks. So these are other compelling reasons I would ask the board to approve. Thank you. Who else would like to be heard? Well, a lot of people, but not too many. Want to talk, huh? What's I'm your Mark name? Benny, with my wife, Rebecca. We Hi, Mark and Rebecca. Nice to see you. East side, we mm -hmm. have a 25-foot wide strip of land from our property on Lakeview Street to the pond. Okay. I see the plan that they're submitting. We talk about a five-foot setback you, cur you currently have, but that is for a structure that's not permitted. There was a deck added that was never permitted that intruded up to our property line within mm. five feet. Before that deck was added, we had 28 feet from their house to our property How long ago was that deck added? Fifteen years ago. Mm. Uh, my wife and I did not own the property then. It was in her family. Yeah. It was 
that was passed on to us five years ago. So I would just like it corrected that you are not increasing that setback. Because unless you are, you're, you're counting an unauthorized debt, okay, you are decreasing that setback. So I would like the house shifted to the other property line to hold the, the current setback from the other property line. Well, because they're not building in the same footprint, they have to comply with current Carver zoning bylaws in terms of dimensions. Okay, but their argument is they're um, increasing the setback. And we've always used viewed that deck as an intrusion. Sir, is there going to be a deck on this new construction? Well, we have. Sir? Okay. Go ahead. Pardon? Could you just show me what you're talking about? I'm assuming you're the, the abutter in the gray house? No. No? You're on the other side? I own this piece of property here. Okay. The corner of that deck is four feet from my property. Mm. Is, is that the deck on the their property? That's the deck yes. that's going to be torn down? Yes. Okay. And now, that so the house be... to my property line is 28 feet. That deck was added. It's not permitted. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it should be included as what they're asking for. It's not legal to begin with. Okay. The person who built the deck, can, I know who it is. Can either. you show me where it is on this plan? I'm you're, you're saying you're See the edge of that deck right there? That's right. That's the old deck right there. That dotted this, line. This, this dotted line here. It was all the way over to the house. So this is unpermitted. This whole deck here is unpermitted. Okay, so what they're saying is this is currently five feet. Yeah, they're and what, five. You, what you'd like to say is it's not really five feet. That the well, if this is an unpermitted deck, then that if is. If you take that deck out, how many feet do you have then? 28 feet. 28. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now, I'm sorry, I just needed a visual. I'm sorry to interrupt. Are you done, Mark? Yes. Rebecca, do you have anything? Um, I would just like to say... Um, Stand up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd just like to say that, uh, like Mr. Sullivan said, they're improving the property. Um, we don't have a problem. So Your issue is with the deck? Uh, yes, but that well, is the way it's being represented. Right. That it's an improvement really not from on our side. Okay. It's going from 28 feet to 15 feet. Okay, I got it. Yes, sir. Your name, please. Brian Wozon, Street. All right, Brian. Nice to see you. How are you? It's been a while. Um, we've lived at 18 Lakeview Street for almost 18 years now, and Mrs. Fest, who owned the property back when we bought that originally, and, uh, Rebecca's dad lives next door. That deck, to my knowledge, has always been there. So as far as it not being there previously, I don't know when it got built, but it could have been before they were enforcing any building codes back there, I should say. Um, so I, I don't disagree that it's close to the lot line, but I think that you'd be hard pressed to prove when it got put on. It does need to be replaced or replaced. I think whatever they do with that is going to be a, a great improvement to the area. Thank you. Thank you. Who else would like to be heard? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, my name is John Caparella. Uh, Hi, John. This is my sister, Mrs. Zarba. Hi. We are the abutters on the other side of lot, uh, in lot 9. Um, looks like uh, this gentleman here, uh, the location to the property line is very close. Um, he's He's worried about the same thing I am, you know, the closer it gets, uh, even though the home now, um, the, the proposed home will be further away from the line. The effect of that on my property in the future, if I decide to do improvements, uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly what that is because I don't know what any potential future problems may be. So being closer to our line um, you know, is a concern for me. In general, from what I've seen at the Conservation uh, Commission hearing, um, they did have plans presented or drawings to them and shown the whole house in context of the land, and I had a glimpse of that, but I still don't know exactly what this home is going to look like and how it's going to fit into the property. Um, I had asked for a copy of it. I was never given one. Um, they've entered plans into the record tonight. 
So you can take a, hand. Take a look yeah. if you want. I was in the town hall a couple weeks ago, and this is pretty much all. No, that's there. the site plan. Those yeah. are the plans for the house. Right. And well, that's what I'm saying. It was nothing like that. Back okay. No, because that has to be entered into yep. the record. Okay. So have a look if you like. Yep. Thank you. Um, and some of the other concerns I have uh, regarding the property line location of the house, they're going to be doing excavation. Um, there's a lot of trees and environmental, uh, well, construction concerns regarding the um, the uh, excavation and the foundation of the new home being close to these trees that are on my property which also includes the eight systems of the trees, uh, damage to the property, trucks, um, accessing the site, um, construction equipment, debris, uh, the very narrow lots. Um, all these things uh, potentially you know, could have an effect on or create damage to my property. So I'm concerned and I, I'm curious how all well that's going to be handled. Mm -hmm. And just to be clear, you're the house with the hash marks here that say you're on the west side, existing house, uh, lot nine? Yep, lot yep, nine. Lot so nine. The ex house. Yeah. Okay. Yep. What else you got? So by shifting the house back, are you still keeping the garage? Is that garage and shed still staying or are you demolishing? It stays. It stays. And what happens about the entrance coming into the... Is that being widened? The driveway? Uh, I think that's it for, for, me for now. I'm not overly opposed to the project, but there are concerns that I have, which I'd like to have officially addressed if this uh, hearing needs to be continued um, pending a special permit application. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. But feel free to look at them. Plans. Anybody else who wants to see and we have extra copies, we can put them out out front. Who else would like to be heard? I'd like to augment um, what I had said before. Yes, feel free to I'm augment. Against them improving their property. I just want what they're asking for to represent what they're really asking for. Okay. And you're referring by that to the deck issue. The deck. Okay, I know the person who built the deck. Okay, he also built my house. He used to live there. He was built his best his son. Okay, he built it without a permit. I know it's unpermitted. The records will show that there never was a permit for the deck. And I'm not against them moving the house back and having just a 15-foot setback. Mm -hmm. But they never really only had a five-foot setback. That deck has been somewhat of an issue for some time. Okay. We were never aware of it until this moment. And, okay. and we do have, um, it's not really a bylaw, but there's, uh, an acceptance that if something's been in existence for 10 years, it's no longer in violation. Um, and you're saying that's been in existence for at more least than more than 10 years. But I know I know what you're saying. You know, it's not really five feet. It's you want you want the distance from the lot line to the house to be represented. Okay. Who else would like to be heard? Any augmentation, as Mark would put it? So, uh, Jeff Merritt, 14 yes. Andrews Point Road. Yes. Just one comment. Um, we had worked with the Conservation Commission we, as early as uh, January of this year. We presented our first set of plans. And in that first set of plans, we really lift up the house, new foundation, set the house back down. But they, the Conservation Commission had some valid concerns. And the valid concerns were you know, there would have to be grading issues, that type of thing, too close to the pond. Better for the town to move it back away from the pond, increase the setbacks on each side, not, notwithstanding what we're talking about tonight, but in, in all ways, our opinion working with the board was, if there was a way to move that back away from the pond and make it sort of better for everybody, that was the direction we would head, such that we ended up coming together with these plans, put them forth, mm -hmm. Um, I think we got that approval May 2nd, thereabouts. And then right after that, we did get our septic install permit mm -hmm. uh, for you know, about a week later. So I just thought I'd clear that piece of it a little bit. Yep. Um, because we were trying to work with the boards to make this better for mm -hmm. everybody, um, including ourselves, right? Yep. But everybody involved. So just a record. The other thing I want to add, and just in case you think, you know, it's either picayune or a sticking point about the public notice, 
is that should the board decide to grant the special permit when we get to that point, um, if anyone chooses to appeal it and send it into court, the fact that we it was improperly noticed might just be the starting and ending point of the discussion. Um, and so we're just trying to do this by the books. And it was improperly noticed, um, so we have to fix that. Mueller, Ms. Mello, would you like to be heard? Yes. The current house, how many square feet is it? 1024, right, right in that one back. 10, 12, a little over 1,000 square feet. In the proposed? There is a second story on it, so we're proposing 1,500, 1,520. Uh, but that part of that, the 400 that is the second story. So is it a total of 1,900 square? No. Is there a basement? I mean, I looked at the plans originally, but is, is the basement living space or is it just storage space? But it, but it walks out. It's a walkout it basement. Walk out. Okay. It walks out to the pond. To the pond because of the, the elevation. Oh. The elevation because on the, on the front it looks like it's, it's, it's like a bank house. Like it's like a bank house. And how many square feet is the proposed porch? Uh, I don't, I would have to calculate that for you. Okay. Do you have the same type of stuff that you have for Same type and style of porch as the one that you're going to be replacing? The same type and style. This one does have a cover over the porch. When you say, you mean like an awning? No, uh, I'm sorry, a, a roof over the porch. Well, it's a roof over the porch? Like a farmer's porch? For a porch. For, 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 Sorry, here we go. So this is the back, this is the front. So that's the basement. Yeah. And that's the porch. So while the other board members are still thinking about this, uh, we're going to have to re-notice. It's going to have to be another advertisement. And we're going to have to have another meeting. So the question becomes, what do we do with this meeting? My thought is that you be allowed to withdraw without prejudice so that you can file under the proper um, bylaw which would be four special permits as opposed to straight variances. What's your thought on that, people? Yes, draw without prejudice. Would draw without prejudice? Excellent. You like that? I like that. I was struggling. I like when we talk about without prejudice, what we mean is in the legal trade that the person who is withdrawing can turn around the next day and file again, but in a slightly different way, or perhaps even a dramatically different way depends on what they want to do, but it doesn't, um, allowing a person to withdraw does not prevent them from refiling. And I think to be fair to the petitioners, that's probably the, the best approach to take tonight so that you can get your uh, ducks in a row, so to speak, and uh, get this re-noticed and come back before us again, presumably with something pretty close to this plan or perhaps even identical, but now asking for a special permit as opposed to the straight variances. It makes all the difference legally, believe me. Oh, I'd like to add that we request the town waive the filing fee. Yes. Um, yeah. I think there's nothing we can do about the certified mailing fee because that's the post office, um, but we can certainly waive the filing fee. And we've done this in the past when there's been, this isn't the first time this kind of thing has happened and we, we've waived the filing fee. So we'll get that notice to the town administrator and the town clerk, I think, is when we file or the planner. So. But I, I think that's the, the, the best answer to this um, because other than that, you're gonna ask us to vote on this case, which 
you know, there's there's a lot of reasons why we, at least one of us would vote it down um, without the, the special permit giving us the leeway that we need. And I'm, I'm sorry to put you through this. I really am. But again, like Chairman Gray said, it's, it's just a legal thing and that we don't want it to go the wrong way. Do you folks to my left have any further uh, comments or questions? No. So does do the, I hear a motion? Well, does the board want to do a site visit? Or? Well, not on the basis of this petition. Okay. So we don't want to get our he ahead of ourselves, it seems no. to me. So do I hear a motion? Well, they have to ask. Oh, you want to ask? <laughs> you want to ask to be allowed to withdraw without prejudice? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just these little details. So do I hear a uh, motion, to accept. motion to accept? I'll make a motion to accept. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So Aye. you've been allowed to withdraw without prejudice. And the next vote that we want to take is to uh, recommend to the uh, town administrator that the filing fee for your next application be waived. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So you don't have to pay a second. I'll take care of that. Application fee. I'll take care of making sure that. Okay. That's noticed. Okay. So I have um, a thought that I would like to pass on to the three of you. Based on what you've heard here tonight from concerned neighbors and abutters, you may want to think about that deck and you may want to think about what construction will do to trees in the area and their root systems um, these I think are the two primary concerns that I heard tonight and I'm not suggesting to you that either one of these concerns will kill your petition once you get it properly filed as a request for a special permit but these are concerns that have been expressed and I think you should you'd be well advised to come back with an idea or ideas about how to address those five feet's pretty close as you've heard and the trees uh, appear to be pretty close as well so I'll let you folks sort of figure out what to do about that if anything so in a way maybe this gives you a second bite of the apple you know to kind of figure out something that that will make everybody happy I uh, there's, I'm sorry. Uh, there was one more concern that I had. Um, uh, for the excavation of the foundation, uh, there's going to be new grading, um, which also means drainage issues, potential drainage issues. Hey, can I just interrupt for a second? We've just closed the hearing. Oh. Yeah. So what I want you to do is if you have any specific concerns that you forgot and neglected to bring up the first time, make sure you pass it on to the applicants. Sure. Okay. Sorry, I didn't know you. No, no, no. That's that's okay. No, um, we have rules. They're crazy. It's these these thorny rules. So, um, yeah. Before they leave, they seem like very nice gentlemen. Uh, talk to them about any additional concerns that you might have. Did I see another hand? I guess not. So, yeah. That's what I would suggest. And then, uh, when this meeting gets re-advertised as a request for a special permit, and you'll see it in the newspaper because it's going to be published all over again then um, you'll know what date that we're going to be coming back we don't have a date now but you'll know what date and uh, you can come back in and uh, talk to your heart's delight to us How's that? I would suggest that you get back in by Friday um, if you can because that will set it in motion to get the publishing dates done and with any luck we could be in here in another month um, because we have to do the, the publishing and certain everybody will get your letters again um, and that will you know hopefully be the bottom line okay so thank you for your attention everybody thank you. and uh, I'm sure we'll see most if not all of you again in about a month and you can make reference to the same set of plans and I, I think you just you want to take them?
I mean, I didn't draw on mine. <laughs> Usually I'm drawing. Those on are the towns. I'm but sorry. But we that. do have some extras. So how many would you like? No, I don't want you to have to go through the trouble. I can get the house plans from that other table. Did you? Did you want? Did you want this or? Okay. I know it's a tough one. Thank you. Love the house. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really we have to go into executive session. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, conversations, please, outside. We have other things that we need to attend to. Madam Clerk, do we have any correspondence that you should make us uh, aware of? I have nothing. No correspondence, which brings us to the final matter for the evening. And uh, before I get into that, I'll allow everybody to withdraw. Oh, that's okay. That's <laughs> you can pretty much leave it where you found it. Did you bring that? Oh, okay, well. Okay, this board is about to go into executive session. Mr. Luzon, could you close the door behind you when you're finally you're able to get out? <laughs> Thank you. In fact, you guys are all going out for pizza. <laughs> I'm hungry. Thank you. So the next matter is an executive session under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Subsection A, Subsection 3, to discuss strategy with respect to pending litigation in the case of Town of Carver Planning Board versus the Town of Carver Zoning Board of Appeals which is in the Plymouth Superior Court, docket number 1683CV00720, as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the public body. Votes may be taken while we are in executive session. I ask at this point for a roll call vote to uh, make certain that everybody affirms that this board should be going into executive session. Ms. Mello. I agree. Mr. Mueller. I agree. Ms. Clark. I agree. Mr. Nowen. I agree. Uh, I do want to announce that we will not be reconvening <clears throat> in open session. Uh, we will adjourn uh, when we're done with the executive session. So I wish everybody a happy and healthy evening and rest of the week. of the week.